Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. God be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiving. In silence, we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Knowing, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They would be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. 
and shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Thessalonians, the first letter. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Praise and glory to God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And, he asked, and they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know the one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who are you? When someone asks you that question, how do you answer? How do you finish the sentence, I am... Do you insert your job description? I am a teacher, a nonprofit executive, an attorney, a salesperson, a market analyst. I am a student, a nurse, a business person, a homemaker who, when you really think about it, takes all of the above and does it without pay? Or do you finish the sentence within a relational context? I am a parent, a sibling, a godparent, a child, an uncle or aunt, a grand or great-grandparent. The Pharisees wanted to know who John the Baptist was. What was his context? What was his goal? Where was he leading these people who were flocking to the river to be baptized? Was he a prophet? But most importantly, who gave John authority to baptize? John was a bit of a problem to the religious authorities. Anyone who acts outside one's determined canonical authority always is. But will this activity prove to undo the hierarchy? How could we survive without structure, without clear boundaries, without clear consequences, without control? John soon discovered how much of a threat he was when he was thrown into prison and eventually executed by those who didn't like being reminded of what it really meant to have morals and ethics informing their choices. This scenario will play out in history repeatedly. So who is John? John was a messenger. 
a harbinger. John was the cousin and proclaimer of the one who was and is and is to come. John was the Baptist and a servant of Jesus. He was a signpost pointing to who was important. Don't look at me, look over there. He's the one you need to pay attention to, not me. So today is a good day to pause and consider who might be the John the Baptists of our day. It isn't easy. The people who come to mind might be prophetic and point to issues of justice. People like William Barber or James Cone. Or perhaps you're imagining someone whose charitable works are worthy of note. Dolly Parton comes immediately to mind. And then there are also those who spoke truth to power with negative circumstance, circumstances like Karen Silkwood, Mark Felt, also known as Deep Throat, and most recently, Alexander Vindman. But do they point to Jesus? Is the connection obscure at best? Or is the Jesus part simply assumed like in the case of Barber and Cone. But let's not stop with individuals. If we look at the church in general, and in Redeemer specifically, do we define who we are in relationship with Jesus? Or do we see ourselves in another way? Are we clergy and laity? Yes. But that's our relationship with each other and to the church. Are we doing good works? Yes, of course we are. Our recent collection on Toy Sunday, which was just a little over $1,500, by the way. And the consistent response for Bethesda Cares and Manna make that very, very clear. Are we concerned with works of justice? Of course we are. We march, we protest, we post signs, we vote, we take on our own racist tendencies and confess them. We make beautiful music. We can renovate a building in which to gather. They're all good things, but they are what we do and not who we are. When it comes to who we are, the question ultimately comes down to, are we pointing to Jesus? If we aren't, then we are a distraction to those seeking a relationship with Christ. In these last two weeks of Advent, I ask that you ponder how we individually and as a community might use John the Baptist as our model and example. How might we emulate John's consistent pointing out to others the way to a relationship with Jesus, his cousin and our brother? Who are you? Who are we? We are first and foremost children of God. There is no one that you could see on the street, in the workplace, in your home, on the news, on Zoom, that God doesn't love. May we resolve to seek and serve Christ in all persons and love our neighbors as ourselves and let this love show others a path to God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and lived. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Chrissy, are, are you doing the prayers today? Okay. Caring God, we thank you for your gifts in creation for our world. The heavens tell of your glory. For our land, its beauty and its resources. For the rich heritage we enjoy. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth that we may use your gifts responsibly. For those who work on the land and sea, in city and in industry, that all may enjoy the fruits of their labors and marvel at your creation. For artists, scientists, and visionaries, that through their work we may see creation afresh. We thank you for giving us life, for all who enrich our experience. We pray for all who are deprived of fullness of life, for prisoners, refugees, and those who are sick, for those in politics, medical science, social and relief work, and for your church, for all who seek to bring life to others. We thank you that you have called us to celebrate your creation. Give us reverence for life in your world. We thank you for your redeeming love. May your word and sacrament strengthen us to love as you love us. God, creator, bring us new life. Jesus, redeemer, renew us. God, you shape our dreams. As we put our trust in you, may your hopes and desires be ours, and we, your expectant people. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. Christ calls us to live in unity. We seek to live in the spirit of Christ.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We give you thanks because Christ, the Son of Righteousness, has dawned as our deliverance and as your power to renew the world in love and justice. The Spirit of God be with you. Lift your hearts to heaven. Let us give thanks to God. It is right indeed to give you thanks, most loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the firstborn from the dead, the pioneer of our salvation, who is with us always, one of us, yet from the heart of God. For with your whole created universe, we praise you for your unfailing gift of life. We thank you that you make us human and stay with us even when we turn from you to sin. God's love is shown to us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In that love, dear God, righteousness and strong to save, you came among us in Jesus Christ, our crucified and living Lord. You make all things new. In Christ's suffering and cross, you revealed your glory and reconcile all peoples to yourself their true and living God. In your mercy, you are now our God. Through Christ, you gather us, newborn in your spirit, a people after your own heart. We entrust ourselves to you, for you alone do justice to all people, living and departed. Now is the acceptable time. Therefore, with saints and martyrs, Apostles and prophets with all the redeemed, joyfully we praise you and say, Holy, 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 God of all mercy, giver of life, earth and sea and sky and all that lives, declare your presence and your glory. All glory to you, giver of life, sufficient and full for all creation. Accept our praises, living God, for Jesus Christ, the one perfect offering for the world, who in the night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he'd given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many to forgive sin. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Therefore, God of all creation, in the suffering and death of Jesus, our Redeemer, we meet you in your glory. We lift up the cup of salvation and call upon your name. Here and now with this bread and wine, we celebrate your great acts of liberation, ever present and living in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, who is, who was and is and is to come. Amen. 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 May Christ ascended in majesty be our new and living way, our access to you, Father, and source of all new life. In Christ, we offer ourselves to do your will. Empower our celebration with your Holy Spirit. Feed us with your life. Fire us with your love. Confront us with your justice. And make us one in the body of Christ with all who share your gifts of love. Through Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in heaven and earth, we worship you, the Creator God. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. May we who share these gifts be found in Christ and Christ in us. Let us pray. Dear us, Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in when we are gathered and believe as a community of Christ. Enter into our hearts this day. Enter to receive this sacrament physically, we nevertheless receive all the benefits of this communion. We share this moment. Remember Christ, we are to each other. May we receive and share the solace and hope, the pardon and peace that your presence brings. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, this 
Jesus. Most loving God, creator and redeemer, we give you thanks for the foretaste of your glory. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you in your world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the servant, our friend and brother. Amen.
Christ, the son of righteousness, scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Grace be with you. Be God. Go in peace. We do have a few announcements. I think I skipped them. Oh, there they are. Um, as I no noted in my Friday uh, from the heart, I have decided to lower my expectations and we are going to walk to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania because <laughs> at this point, getting over the ocean is just not gonna happen. So keep walking and let me know how many miles you've walked, how much exercise you've been doing, and we'll see if we can get to the other Bethlehem. Um, thanks to everybody for Toy Sunday. And uh, like, like I said before, we've, we raised a little over $1,500 for um, St. Nicholas to purchase toys for the kids. And also a, a truckload of toys arrived as well. So the, the kids at CFLS are going to be um, just absolutely overjoyed. Thank you so much. Um, there was one other thing on that little pink sheet. Now I can't remember. Huh? Blue, blue Christmas and Christmas Eve. Yes. Um, we will be doing both. Uh, blue Christmas is going to be recorded and we'll have more information about that this coming week. Christmas Eve will be live. Uh, here from here on uh, December 24th, which is a Thursday, two weeks, and it will be at 1030. So please mark your calendars and I hope to see all of you in little boxes on that day. 1030 yes, 1030 p.m. Thank you, Jeffrey. What would I do without him? I don't know. Um, probably laugh a lot less. Anyway, um, is there anything else, folks, that I me or forgot? Coffee hour now? We are going to go into coffee hour here in just a second. Um, you all can chat. I have a little bit of cleaning up to do and then I'll be back with you. Enjoy.